Black Metal, a genre steeped in violence, death, and total misanthropy. There have been several acts since the beginning of the genre that have pushed the limits of music and what it means to be a band or artist. We all know about Mayhem and the string of crimes and tragedies that had erupted from the true Norwegian black metal scene, eventually ending in the death of Mayhem co-founder and guitarist Euronymous at the hands of Burzum founder and frontman Vard Vikernes. However, despite that topic being talked about to death, there are a lot more interesting stories and bands within the expansive genre of black metal. Tonight we will be covering one of those said bands and the air of mystery surrounding them and their lead singer, which have led many to question if he ever really existed at all. This is the story of Silencer and Natrum, black metal's urban legend. Before we dive into the story itself, we must take a look at the genre it spawned from. There are many subgenres to black metal, some being highly praised and celebrated amongst circles, to some being deeply frowned upon and shunned by most major music and metal communities. The main genre that will be covered tonight is known as DSBM, or Depressive Suicidal Black Metal. Depressive Suicidal Black Metal spawned from the already existing black and doom metal genre, which melds together the thickness and slower passages of doom metal, the shrieking vocals, and heavy distortion of black metal. Pioneered mostly in Sweden by bands such as Catatonia, Bethlehem, Ophelamia, and more, the genre utilizes typical lyrics of depression, suicide, and misanthropy among other topics. DSBM recordings opt in for a lo-fi sound, even more so than your standard black metal release at the time. The main structures that make up DSBM include heavy distortion on the guitars, high-pitched vocal work lacking any sort of energy other than pure hopelessness and desperation, as well as some acoustic instrumentation and non-distorted guitars. The aspect of a one-man band is also a very prominent subject in this genre to really drive home the feeling of loneliness. Projects like Zather by Scott Connor and Leviathan by Jeff Whitehead have released some of the most influential albums in modern black metal, with them mostly being the project's sole members, hearkening back to the days of Bark Vickerness and Burzum. While Burzum is not a DSBM project itself, many DSBM bands, especially one-band projects, were influenced by Vark's work ethic and sound. I could cover black metal and DSBM forever, and may even make a larger video discussing the full history of DSBM one day with how much I have listened to in my time being a fan of black metal. However, tonight we are here to focus on one band and their lead singer who had so much speculation and rumors circulated about him that has gone down as more of an urban legend in black metal circles. Silencer is a band that has strikingly little information known about it. Formed in 1995 in Stockholm, Sweden and disbanding in 2001, Silencer only released one full-length album and one demo in that six-year time frame, with both releases having the same name and the full length being released the same year the project disbanded. Starting out as a solo project of guitarist slash bassist Andreas Casado, with various session and studio musicians being used to fill in the remaining spots, while recording both the full length and the demo. The band's main lyrical themes revolve around insanity, misanthropy, and suicide, and have never played live or participated in any interviews leading to very little to be known about the project, and thus, we are only left with speculation. At some point prior to the 1998 release of the Death Pierce Me demo, Andreas Casado enlisted the help of a vocalist known only as Natrum. Death Pierce Me is the only studio album released by Silencer in 2001. Death Pierce Me is a soundtrack to the insane and broken, a cry for help, a destruction of the soul and mind where most of the lyrics read like suicidal poetry from only the most pained individual. It has been stated that Natrum extensively harmed himself during the writing and recording process of this album to really get into the mindset, and it shows. While only sitting at six tracks in total, Silencer managed to create a feeling that only few metal albums have been able to, both pioneering the depressive suicidal black metal sound and set a new standard for it. The instrumentation is crushing and suffering yet beautiful. Andreas Casado's guitar and bass work here is still fast, reminiscent of standard black metal, but it feels heavier and a little sludgier in my opinion. Pairing that with the studio musician Steve Wall's pummeling drums, the instrumentation is definitely the main highlight of this album, creating an atmosphere of pure desolation and sorrow. The opening to tracks like Sterile Nails and Thunder Battles is nothing short of serene against the chaos of the vocals of the song. There are also some keyboard passages conducted by an unknown musician on parts of the album that give a more dark ambient vibe as well. 
though. Possibly though, the most recognizable trait of this album is also its most challenging feature. Natrum's vocals are hard to define and even harder to get used to compared to other black metal vocalists and projects. Natrum's vocals are pain. High pitched shrieks, low gutturals, and suffocating gurgles litter the entire album's 49 minute runtime. Many have said that it's hard to get used to Natrum's vocals, and as someone who has listened to this release countless times, I can agree it can come off quite comedic at first, but can still provide this level of torture and pain, especially when paired with the instrumentation. This is also the first and only release from the band. I'm sure that if they stuck around for longer, Natrum's vocals would have been more refined with time. However, there is one glaring problem with this release that would definitely stop someone from enjoying this project fully or even at all. That is the song, I Shall Lead, You Shall Follow. While most of the lyrics up until this point have just been about death, misanthropy, suicide, and insanity, the lyrics to I Shall Lead, You Shall Follow are hard to ignore as being questionably sketchy at best and straight up an NSBM song at worst, and it's most likely the latter. For the uninitiated, NSBM, or National Socialist Black Metal, is a subgenre of the black metal scene where extreme fascism, racism, anti-Semitism, and more abhorrent ideologies run rampant. The lyrics to I Shall Lead, You Shall Follow have a set of lyrics that read, The consumption of six million stars, cyclonic winds and septic wars, shed the blood of the Jumans, slay the Lion of Judah, revive the Knight of Crystals, convert my ashes, rebuild me in the spiral world of nowhere. My only solution is the cosmic conclusion. Bow for me. References to the consumption of six million stars and shedding the blood of Jumans are blatant anti-Semitic images of the Holocaust, a mass genocide conducted by the Third Reich in which some six million Jewish people were brutally and unjustly ripped from their loved ones, tortured, assaulted, forced into labor in internment camps, and murdered. The lyric, Revive the Night of Crystals, calls to Crystal Nacht, or the Night of Broken Glass, which translates from German to Crystal Night. We're on the night of November 9th leading into November 10th, 1938, Nazi officials ordered a series of pogroms to be unleashed on the Jewish population in which unprecedented violence was committed against Jews. About 30,000 Jews were rounded up and forced into concentration camps. People were beaten murdered, arrested, had businesses and synagogues destroyed, all because they were Jewish. I Shall Lead, You Shall Follow could be interpreted as the mad ramblings of an insane man, much like all fascist rhetoric. But the fact is that Natrum, as far as we know, is the sole lyricist for most of this album, especially this track, and his call for the revival of pogroms against the Jewish people and the already existing Nazi problem black metal has, it's far scarier than any of the rumors and speculation about the man that I will cover later in this video. Very little is known about all the members and those involved in Silencer, but Natrum's story, or lack thereof, raised a lot of interest in the more underground circles of the black metal community. While known for his bizarre and terrifying vocal work on Silencer's releases, very little is known regarding Natrum himself. Due to Natrum choosing to live his life in anonymity, we don't know his age or confirmed full name, and only pictures that have been widely circulated show a man covered in bloody bandages, donning pig's feet, and a lack of a face with only messy strands of hair forming on each side of the head. This image alone almost feels like a real creepypasta in and of itself. Imagine not knowing what black metal was, and even less so what underground and depressive black metal is, finding or stumbling upon these photos. Much like any urban legend, this is where the rumors and speculation begin to pick up. Since very little is known about Natrum's life, many do not know about the person behind the vocals of Silencer in these terrifying photos. Popular rumors involve Natrum cutting off his own hands and having pig's feet replace the bloody stumps. While this is obviously not true, Natrum did allegedly commit various acts of self-harm during practice and recording sessions in order to get that truly painful and misanthropic vocal range. After the release of Death Pierce Me, it is rumored that Natrum was admitted to a psychiatric hospital due to a declining and rapidly deteriorating mental health, though it has never been confirmed whether he was admitted willingly or sectioned. This could be plausible due to the aforementioned claims of extensive self-harm and even the story that is floated around regarding Natrum approaching a playground and attacking a six-year-old girl with an axe. This is also an unsubstantiated claim, much like a lot of other rumors revolving around Natrum. However, attacking small children with axes aside, I think that Natrum embodies the pure evil, misanthropy, and sadistic nihilism that so many bands have aimed for during the peak of black metal. There are countless other bands and projects that have most likely had a member partake in some fucked up shit or die in a horrific way, but Natrum has always had an air of mystery about him, and that have led to some to even question if he was a real person or not. After 
After Silencer's breakup, Natrum would spend several years in inactivity until starting up a dark ambient project called Diagnose. Diagnose is a pretty interesting project, and if I had to pick possibly my favorite of the albums I listened to while researching and writing this video. While it's mainly a dark ambient project, Natrum incorporates more experimental elements here including industrial, marital industrial, drone, and even noise. It's a pretty interesting listen if you're a dark ambient and old school industrial head. Natrum also wrote a book released in 2011 entitled Grishyarta, or Pig's Heart in English. The book contains never-before-seen photos of Natrum, as well as a collection of his art and poetry, including lyrics from Silencer tracks. While I haven't read through the whole book itself, a free copy is on the internet archive that I've skimmed through. The art contained within the book is very dark and abstract and expressive. The poetry goes along with this being very similar to the work he wrote for Silencer. The pictures of Natrum provided are few and still mysterious and cryptic. However, we get to see him unmasked and bearing normal hands. The photos are pretty cool, displaying a level of emotion and pain that has been with Natrum his whole life and what inspires his art so much. Natrum is definitely an interesting artist in the black metal scene, a mysterious being of pain, hate, and misery. There have never been and most likely never will be another musician quite like Natrum again. From the urban legends and rumors, self-harm, insanity, depression, and misanthropy, Natrum, and as a whole, Silencer, managed to create something that, while questionable in its ethics and ideologies, is nonetheless a staple in the genre it found its home in. I will now leave you with a poem by Natrum titled, Shoot Me Into Eternity. Here I place my dewy eyes on the grave, on this cool ground, rests our eternal union. Here somewhere, in the dimly written stands for the perspective clear to read. You, the third soul, the first animal, the last man, Animalis Codex, rises again, continuing infinitely, from the dream to action. The most threatening, after all, is oblivion. And dead I am when you forget me. God is screaming through the clouds that the old man's comfort becomes the youngster's voice. And everything, absolutely everything, shall go out of my hands. <laughs> 